What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode six of the Clubhouse podcast with me, Sonny G. Um, this is brought to you by Team Games and Grab Studios. That's what it is now. Team Games and Grab Studios. All of our shit just under Teams, Games and Grab Studios, basically. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode of the Games and Grabs podcast. It was so much fun to record with with Steve and Finn again. I'm excited to do more. Um, and it just felt right. You know, we, we you know, it has any, I don't know, it's been like, what, a few months since we did it? Um, and nothing ever changes, you know? Plus, we all still talk all the time anyway, so it's not like we're just complete strangers to one another. But yeah, so it's great to be back doing games and graps again. Really happy about that. And yeah, here's to more. I just realized on the camera, I'm like, really, is like more above me than there is of actual me. So let's just do a bit of. That's better. That's much better. There we go. Um, obviously, if you've listened to this, uh, just the audio version, that would have meant nothing to you. And you would have just probably heard me clattering around on the microphone, which is. Uh, which is great fun, of course. But yeah, so the Games and Grass podcast uh, is back and it was great. People enjoyed it. So yeah, thank you to anybody who did listen to Games and Graps last week. It was it was great and there's plenty more to come. Finn's going to be doing some streaming stuff. Steve is, uh, we're not sure what Steve's going to do just yet, but Steve is going to do some stuff as well. But yeah, we'll, we'll be doing stuff together, separately, but we're all still team games and graps which at the end of the day is the most important thing for sure so what have i been doing so last week i didn't record a podcast because i thought you know games and graps is probably going to be enough to get people through this week so if you were expecting a podcast on my feed i'm sorry uh, my podcast is also going to go onto the games and graps feed now as well as my own so yeah Go, just go find games and graps on your uh, on the podcast service service podcast service of your choice, and you'll be able to find my podcast on there as well as the games and graps podcasts that we record. <sighs> okay, so last week um, I was at wrestling in Hinkley. You know what? God damn it, man! There's a dog next door, and all it does is fucking bark all the time. Jesus Christ! Look, I get it. Dogs bark, yeah? But Jesus Christ. You probably can't hear it because my microphone's pretty good and probably won't pick it up. But I can hear it, and it's annoying as shit. All right? I had to get it out there because I can just hear it. It's like he it wants to be a guest on the podcast, but we only have one animal part of the podcast, and that is Podcat, who is probably just sleeping somewhere. So yeah, I was at Wrestling in Hinkley last weekend, and as always, it was a really good show. Great turnout, again, as always. That crowd in Hinkley is just, is always so good to me. They really are. Um, the kids, they absolutely love it. And, you know, it's great to see them fully getting into it and fully getting behind the storylines and and the matches as well. You know, this, the one thing I will say, for, fam for fa family friendly shows, they aren't like what they used to be back in the day. We had fake Kane and fake The Rock and whatever else, fake DX, Jesus Christ. And it was like the posters were plastered American wrestling. It's not like that no more. All right. Yeah, it's still family friendly in the way where, you know, no one's, no one's, you know, got color and no one's swearing their heads off. But the wrestling is very good. And there's so many talented guys and girls who perform on these shows. And, you know, Hinkley's no exception to that. And everybody who goes to Hinkley to watch, you can tell they just really appreciate everything that's going on in and out of the ring. And it's just a great atmosphere. It's a well-run show. Um, Tom and Georgina, they do a phenomenal job. I love those guys. And yeah, man, I just love being a part of wrestling in Hinkley. And it's, uh, yeah, if, I, I mean, if I'm ever not there for any reason, I hate that I'm not there. So when I took a little bit of a break um, earlier on in the year and I missed one of the shows, you know, I was good that I missed it. And yeah, so I had to come back. I had to come back and I had to do it. So, and here I am now doing everywhere, apparently. But it was really, really good. Um, some Mark who will <laughs> will remain nameless. 
brought his championship belt from another company along with him. Like I said, he's going to remain nameless because I don't I don't want to name and shame because you know that's that's not a good thing to do. It's not a good look for me to do that. But he's a mark for himself, and we're in the we're in the changing room. And we caught <laughs> we caught a glimpse of it under a towel. And someone was like, "Which belt is that?" And the person in question was like, "Oh, oh, making excuse <laughs> making excuses for himself as to as to why he's such a mark for himself." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, look, dude, in future, just leave it in the car, and we won't rib you, okay? <laughs> but, but like I said, I'm not going to name names. If he knows who it is, he's been shamed. And he knows it as well. And he'll listen to this and he'll text me. And that's okay. But look, so yeah, he, he, <laughs> I was sort of hoping that at the meet and greet, uh, he'd have it there with him. But he didn't. And that, that's disappointing to me. The excuse was, you know, he had a show the day after and he was staying out that, that night. But just leave it in the car. Just leave it in the car. And you won't get ribbed by non-wrestlers and douchebags like me. Anyway, shout out to um, RC Chaos. He's going to be doing commentary with me next week at Wrestle Carnival, which I'm fucking so stoked for, man. I cannot wait. The card is honestly, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Let me uh, let me let me just get the card up here. One second. Here we go. Right. So, so we got Leon Slater versus Robbie. I mean, this 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 card features some of the most incredible talent in the UK. And then me and RC Chaos are going to be sitting there at the commentary table. Good times. Leon Slater's taking on Robbie X. We've got Becker versus Lana Austin. Man like Doris versus Eric Young. George Lydon, great performer. Versus Big Guns Joe versus Jim Diehard versus Tommy Kyle in a scramble match. Lucia Lee, shout out Lucia. We shared a car ride together once. It was certainly an experience. Um, she's taking on Ava. Jetta versus Charlie Morgan. That's going to be good. Really, really good. Chris, Chris, for, for fuck's sake, why? I can't even speak. Chris Ridgeway. Chris Ridgeway. How now, brown cow? Chris Ridgeway is taking on Emerson Jane. And uh, we've got Charles Crowley defending the Wrestle Carnival Championship against Scott Garland, formerly known as Scotty Too Hotty. Now, uh, the artist formerly known as Alexander Wolf. I can't pronounce his surname. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce it for next week because otherwise I'm going to sound like a dickhead. Uh, but Axel, I think it's Tisha. Tisha. That's what I think it's that. But I don't know 100%. And I appreciate that that makes me sound and look like a dickhead. But I'll learn it for next week, and it'll all be good. Um, he's going to be taking on the winner of Charles Crowley and Scott Garland and will challenge for the Wrestle Carnival Championship. So, man, that is going to be an unbelievable show. Um, and it's at the HMV Empire in Coventry, and that's an unbelievable venue. And I cannot wait to be there and just to just to be part of the whole thing. They're, they've sold more tickets than they've ever sold. So it's going to be their biggest attendance. Um, so yeah, man, it's going to be so, so good and I'm super excited to be a part of it and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. This is probably the, the biggest show that I've ever been a part of and that's not me, you know, knocking any of the other shows that I've been on because, you know, I'm grateful for every single show and promotion that I am a part of. Uh, but this feels huge to me, you know, I've been watching Scotty Too High since I was a, since I was a kid, um, you know. Alexander Wolf, I'm, you know, I met at a download festival queued up to get his autograph when he was part of um, Imperium in NXT. Eric Young, I've obviously met and worked with before, but, you know, second time in a year that I'm getting to work with Eric Young. And yeah, it's just, it feels crazy to, um, to just be a part of it all, you know? So I'm super, super excited for that. The day before, uh, I'm in Telford for APW, so... Um, if you go to apwprowrestling.com, you can get tickets for APW at uh, Dorley Town Hall. It's the New Heights show, which means um, the main event is going to be a ladder match 
uh, for the APW Tag Team titles. It's going to be really, really good. I'm super excited to be there. Once again, um, it's going to be myself and RC Chaos on commentary. RC Chaos, you know, it, you know, it wasn't him or was it him that had the championship belt at wrestling in Hinkley? Either way, I hope whoever it is just brings it to every single show now because it'll pop me, pop me hard. <laughs> I love you, brother. I'm only messing. Oh. Shout out to Hot Tag Reviews as well, by the way. That's the podcast that um, RC and a couple of his friends do where they review wrestling shows. They're currently going through, two, uh, sorry, 1998, which is one of my favorite years, if not my favorite year um, of WWF shows and pay-per-views. So you go check that out. They've got a, they've uh, done 1997 as well. I'm not sure why I'm pointing behind me, like showing you where I am like or where, where, where to go. Behind me was where the... Uh, where Hot Tag Reviews podcast is. So, yeah. Good times. Yeah, go to apwprowrestling.com for tickets to New Heights. Uh, go to thewrestlecarnival.com as well for tickets to Ringmasters at the HMV Empire in Coventry. Um, you can also get tickets from the venue as well. That's going to be my first full weekend of doing wrestling stuff like Saturday and Sunday. And it's cool. It is really cool. Yeah. I know I talk about this every week, but, you know, it is still crazy that I get to be a part of pro wrestling, considering it's something that I always wanted to be a part of since I was a kid and all that sort of stuff. Look, I'm not going to bore you with it again, but, yeah, it's just crazy. Every single time I get to sort of do a show and, you know, hang around with the talent and all that sort of stuff. It's, yeah, it's nuts to me. I'm super grateful. One thing I never do, though, is take a championship belt from one promotion to another promotion show. It's just mark, mark behavior. <laughs> I'm joking, dude, all of you. All right, man. So, yeah, Wrestling Hinkley was really good last week. Uh, the next show is in October. Uh, so if you go to wrestlinginhinkley.bigcartel.com, um, I'm not sure you can buy tickets yet, but just keep that website in mind and look out for the show we've just done uh, to go on demand. I'm not sure where it's going to go now. I'm sure we'll find out very soon, obviously, because Powered 4 TV has now um, ceased to exist. They've been doing some fun stuff with the Rebellion to mark the end of Powered 4 TV. It's funny because some people are taking it dead, dead serious, like it's not a work, but it definitely is a work and it's a fun work. So just let them have fun. They're going out. They're going out in style. They're going out with fun. And that is very cool indeed. Full Force Wrestling last night. Uh, I wasn't there, but um, by all accounts, it was a very good show. Shout out to Hotshot Joey Scott, who is heading to America uh, this coming week. And he's going to be doing some shows out there. He's going to be out there for a little while. Um, safe travels. Go smash it. I know you will. When I called his match at Wrestling in Hinkley last week, I thought it was the best I've ever seen him. Uh, I thought physically he's probably in the best shape he's probably ever been in. And he was throwing new moves in there, and he just looked great, man. He's going to go out to America and absolutely smash it. So, uh, yeah, go do it, dude. Go do it. Go make us all proud. I know you will do. Oh, man. So I've been playing some games this week. I've been really, I've been really like, not sure what to play. You ever get that? Where you're just like not sure. You're sitting at your your desk or whatever, or sitting in front of the TV with your consoles, and you're like, oh, I've got a million fucking games to play here because, you know, Game Pass is obviously stacked on Xbox, and then PlayStation have just gone and thrown nearly eight hundred or eight hundred plus games on to the new PlayStation Plus collection. And you're just like, come on, guys, you're not making my life easier here. I've got games that I've I've paid for games that I've been sent that I need to play. And then you're stacking the deck against me. So yeah, man, I've been, I've been doing some gaming this week. Um, I've been playing formula one 2022, which I've got to say absolutely rips. And it's not surprising that it rips, but it, it does. And it, it's just so good. It's so consistent every single year. It's, it's one of the best racing games you can buy. It's one of, from a presentation perspective, one of the best sports games out there. You know, I, I hold it. I hold the Formula One games up there with NBA and, and FIFA in terms of presentation. 
because it's just so good. Codemasters, who are now a part of EA, of course, um, just do a phenomenal job with the Formula One game every single year. And it's, it just seems to get better and better. And it was already amazing looking, and it's now better looking, which is nuts to me. And they've added, like, different bits. Some bits are pretty pointless. Like, you can do up your house and stuff like that. I don't really get why. But it pops a couple of achievements. So, to me, you know, it's worth it just for that alone. But for people who really could not give a toss about achievements or trophies or whatever, um, they're going to be like, why is this here? Why can I have cars in a showroom in my house? Why are my supercars that I've just bought not just in my garage? Why can I pick the kind of floor that I want in my house? Yeah. But look, it's something new in there. And also, what I the one thing in the game that I am a little bit of a mark for is when you win a race, you get a trophy, and you can put that trophy in your trophy cabinet in your house. Now, because I've got a few trophies in there, my obsession is now wanting to fill it which means I'm going to have to put a shitload of hours into the game. But the game is really good, so I'm happy to do it. Yeah. So I've been playing that. I've been playing the eFootball again. Um, and last week or whenever it was, I can't remember if it was the last podcast I did or the podcast before that. Uh, but I was like, I played FIFA and then I just uh, I just deleted it because I couldn't be asked. Well, I re-downloaded it again. So I don't know why. I really, because eFootball is just an online game. For the most part. Um, but you can only have matches to build your like dream team and stuff at the minute. But I wanted something to play for. And the, the graphics on PES 2016 were really giving me the shit. So um, I thought, oh, I'm just going to download FIFA again and give it another chance, single player and play through a season, so, which I am doing. And I'm really enjoying it. Dogs barking again. I love it. Love it so much. Uh, so, yeah, I'm playing FIFA again and really enjoying it become obsessive with uh, growing the team that I've picked, which is actually Bournemouth. Usually, of course, I would do a season with Man United, which is my team. Um, rubbish in the transfer market in real life. So they're annoying me. So I wanted to do something a bit different. So I've gone with Bournemouth in the championship. And the championship is a difficult league. But I'm enjoying the challenge. Um, yeah, no financial takeover. I'm not into any of that shit. It's just gone straight up with the the, the budget that they have and it makes it even more of a challenge you know you have to get you can get loans in and you can grow your youth team and it just makes things a little bit more interesting but the long and short of it is i'm actually really enjoying playing fifa at the minute uh forgot how great it actually looks um from a graphics standpoint but yeah i'm enjoying that again so i'm just a huge hypocrite for saying that i didn't want to play it anymore and just deleted it which i did do but then i redownloaded it so cool sucking up bandwidth like a fucking idiot. What else? What else have I been playing? What else have I been playing? That's pretty much it, to be honest. That's pretty much it. I wanted um, to like a shooter to play. Um, not just like a linear shooter. So I downloaded. Um, I've downloaded Prey, the Bethesda game, the remake of Prey. Not playing it yet, but it looks really good. So, and I've read the reviews and stuff for it, and it's supposed to be really good. And it was on Game Pass, so you know why not? So I'm going to give that a go. I'll report back next week with my thoughts on Prey, but it looks great, and I've heard nothing but good things. So, I guess it must be okay. I guess. Watched um, Stranger Things. It was awesome. Not going to spoil it because I'm not a dickhead. By the way, if you post spoilers on Twitter or TikTok or Facebook or anywhere, you as a person are a piece of shit, all right? Don't post spoilers for anything. Keep it to yourself until it's been out there a few weeks and then post away because if you've not seen it by, you know, a few weeks after it's been out, then that's your own problem. But don't post spoilers 30 seconds after it's released on fa 30 seconds after you've watched it the day of release. Thankfully, I managed to avoid spoilers. K, not so lucky. But I did manage to avoid spoilers. Go me. But it was really good. Um, definitely go check it out. It's four hours, only two episodes. I say only one. The first one is an hour and a half. The second one is two and a half hours, uh, which adds up to four hours. So good maths from me. But yeah, really, really good. 
Really good. So, um, thankfully, it isn't the end. You know, I'm not going to say why, but there's going to be another season, and that, I think, is going to be the last one the creators have confirmed. So, yeah, More Stranger Things is good in my book, and I can't wait. I just hope it doesn't take as long to bring out as this current series has. I was going to hand up there to it looked like I was waving at the camera, but I wasn't. I was just pulling up the microphone now. Something else that I watched yesterday. Oh my god. Good God, it was fucking painful. Well, it was sort of painful. I quite enjoyed it to a degree, but at the same time, it's rubbish. Now Video game movies, for the most part, you know, aren't good. There are a few exceptions to this rule. Um, the Sonic the Hedgehog movies being one of them exceptions. Mortal Kombat, you know, I'm not going to reel them off now. We'll talk about this another time. But the movie in question that I watched was Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. <sighs> Firstly, I'm going to say this. If you've got Robbie Amell as one of the main stars in your film, your film's going to be bad because he's not a good actor. He's not. Now, I know that sounds like a dickhead thing to say, but it's true. Good looking guy, but he can't act. It's just fact. Can you name a good Robbie Amell film? In fact, apart from Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, can you even name one? No is the answer, most likely. He was in Legends of Tomorrow, I think. Um, obviously part of the Arrowverse, where, uh, that his brother is, of course, a big part of, or was. He's not a good actor either, Stephen Amell. He's okay, but he's not great. Again, good-looking bloke, not a great actor. Have you seen the first series of Arrow? The first few episodes, oh my god, it's rough. It's cheesy and it's rough. So yeah, Robbie Amell, not a good actor. He's not going to hear this. It doesn't even matter. But it's got... Uh, this is definitely going to be the incorrect pronunciation of this name. Uh, Kaya uh, Scudario. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Scudario. Scudario. Either way, she was in Skins. So she's the British girl. Uh she's she's British, but she was in she was in Skins, which was a like a you know, had a cult following back in, you know, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago, whatever. But she's in it, and I like her. She's an attractive girl as well. Very nice to look at. But um, you know, you know. You know, if you've got her and Robbie Amell top billing your film, you know. Tom Hopper's in it as well. Um, he's, for those who don't know who Tom Hopper is, he's the the guy who plays the, the big dude in uh, the Umbrella Academy. And I like him, but he's not good in this. Um, Hannah, Hannah John Kamen as well. She plays Jill. And she is in um, Ant Man and the Wasp, and she plays the, the the bad guy or one of the bad guys in that. And she's good in that. I think she's British as well. But anyway, Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City. If you've seen it, I'm sorry. If you've not seen it, you don't have to see it because I'm telling you that you don't have to. Now. There's, there were some things that I liked in it. Some things, okay? I liked that it stuck truer to the games than the the other set of Resident Evil movies did. So basically what it, what it does is it runs Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2 um, like side by side. So you've got uh, the stars team at the mansion and you've got Leon, who, by the way, in this movie is a pussy. Leon's not a pussy, all right? Do Leon properly. Stop doing him dirty like this. Do it properly. Um, Leon and Claire are at the, the police station. And there were some cool nods to the games. Um, right at one point, there's um, 
like the the three leaf clover as like one of the keys, obviously, which looks like one of the keys in the game because every key has to have a shape, otherwise you're not getting in the fucking door. Um, there was a cool bit, so obviously the iconic bit from Resident Evil where the zombie's eating and then he turns around and looks at you, which is the cover for Resident Evil Director's Cut, I think, in America at least. And the wrestler Wesker has it tattooed on his chest. Cool. And yeah, you know, the police station looked like the police station and the mansion looked like the mansion. Um, and, and yeah, I like them parts of it. I'll tell you who else is in it that I, I do think really sucks. And I, I know I'm sitting here shitting on actors. I'm not an actor, obviously. But Neil McDonough's in it. Um, he plays Damien Dark in the Arrowverse. He's not a good actor either. And he's not good in this. <sighs> Amazingly enough as well, it, it made more than it cost. But I'm assuming that's based on its name alone. Now, there's an end credit scene, so obviously they're hoping to get a sequel out of it. Um, <laughs> I would be fucking astonished if a sequel to this movie gets made. But yeah, you know, I liked the nods to the games. I liked the um, like the aesthetic. It looked like Resident Evil, uh, like both the mansion and both the Raccoon City Police Department. I thought that was cool. There were some cool Easter eggs like to the game. Uh, there was a Jill Sandwich reference um, and a bunch of other stuff. But it's not worth watching just for that. Firstly, it's too long. Way too long. It was an hour and 47 minutes, which is way too long. Well, it's not, but it felt it, you know? You know when a film just drags like fuck because you're watching it because, you, you know, you're already 45 minutes in and you don't want to turn it off even though you know it sucks. But yeah, the aesthetic was good. Um, and the fact that it stuck true to the games, that was good. But the acting was bad. And the CGI was bad. I'm talking like Alien 2 bad. Aliens. You know, like when CGI first started to come in, but you could tell it was CGI and that like the the like the actual models that they used for the aliens looked way better than the CGI. Like if you go back and watch aliens now, you see these CGI and you're like, it's rough. I mean, obviously it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't much better. You could tell it was CGI basically. Look, and I know liquors aren't real and I know that zombies are not real and zombie dogs are not real. This is probably why it made more than its budget, because the budget was about 38p. Anyway, it sucks. Don't watch it. Unless you really have to. Unless you really love Resident Evil that much, that you have to watch it, don't watch it. The first red flag should be that it's got Robbie Amell in it. That's the, I watched it because, oh, it's Resident Evil, and I've seen the other Resident Evil movies, and I'm a fan of Resident Evil, the games, so I'm going to have to watch it. I didn't go to the cinema to watch it. I was like, I'm not doing that. So I waited. It's now on Sky Cinema. I watched it. And yeah. It's not a good movie. The idea is good. The aesthetic is fun. And it's good. And it's true to the film. Too true to the game series. Uh, but the rest of it, not good. Not good. Um, I want to see the Elvis movie. We were going to go watch it yesterday and didn't. We'll go see it at some point, I'm sure. It looks really good. And I've heard nothing but but positive things about it. Yeah. Here's something that annoyed me this week. Let's talk wrestling for a bit. Um, so I watched Forbidden Door, which I enjoyed immensely. I thought it was very, very good. And I thought AEW did an incredible job with it, considering the amount of injuries they've got, what they did was actually put on what will probably go down as uh, one of the best wrestling shows, one of the best wrestling pay-per-views of the year. And I thought that was really good. So kudos to AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling for putting on such an amazing show. Now, I watched Blood and Guts. 
And the thing that annoyed me wasn't the show itself, because the show itself was was fine. What annoyed me was the star ratings, the 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 Meltzer star ratings that everybody cares so much about that came out after. Now he gave the blood and guts match itself 4.75 stars. So pretty close to the full five. And he gave Claudio Castagnoli versus Zack Sabre Jr. from Forbidden Door 4.5. Now look, I know it's only a minuscule amount of point something stars away, but it's incorrect. There is absolutely no way that the Blood and Guts match was as good as Zack Sabre Jr. versus Claudio Castagnoli at Forbidden Door. Not a single chance. In fact, I don't think that the Blood and Guts match was that good at all. I thought it was boring. You know, there's only so much punching and kicking and, and stuff like that that you can do because obviously with the War Games concept, uh, people come in at different intervals. But I don't, I don't know. It just, it just felt slow and boring and didn't move along at a very good pace until everybody was in the match. And even then, I think you could sort of see them, everybody involved in the match, just, you know, filling gaps before the big spots. Uh, which also, by the way, I liked when they went up on the on the roof of the cage. And I, I liked Claudio doing uh, the giant swing um, on Jericho up there. I thought that was very cool. Um, but one thing I did think was really shit, and AEW haven't done this good yet, is when Sammy Guevara came off the top of the cage and went through the the timekeeper's table. Timekeeper's table. Excalibur's there like, oh my God, Sammy just went through the timekeeper's table. Have you ever seen a fucking table? Firstly, it was massive. It was more like a... It was more, <laughs> it was more like a box... You know, a, a, it was more like a thing of crates. A giant thing of cardboard boxes that Sammy went through. It was not the timekeeper's table. The timekeeper's table is a regular sized table with a black cloth on it that people go through every single week on Dynamite. That's the timekeeper's table. This was a fucking huge square with the AEW logo on it. Hmm. Hmm. How very suspect. And yeah, so Sammy Guevara came off the top of the cage, went through this, and you know, it's it's just like when Jericho went off the top of the cage and landed on whatever it was that he landed on. Look, I get it. You've got to be you've got to be safe. Doing spots like that is ridiculous. But I don't know. There was just something about it that it just looked shit. I thought <laughs> I can't put it any other way. I just thought it looked really shit. Yeah, and that's what it is. I, I, I just thought the, the star ratings that Meltzer gave the Blood and Guts match were, were just way too high. And I felt like he gave a way too high star rating to the um, the arena match they had at the last AEW paper. You're not Forbidden Door, the one before that. Double or nothing. I thought they, he gave that a way, um, a way too high star rating. Like, I don't live and die by star ratings. A lot of people love it. A lot of people wait for it to, to come out and be like, oh, the Oracle has spoken. Meltzer's given this a, a good star rating or whatever the fuck. But I don't know. I just think he's he's wrong more than he's right. Maybe just stop with the star ratings. Maybe Meltzer just loves um, violence. Just ridiculous violence. That's what that arena match was. And that's what the blood and guts was. Um. But overall, if you were going to ask me for a star rating for the Blood and Guts, um, I would say it was probably three out of five. 3.5 a, a push. Uh, but Claudio versus Zack Sabre Jr. was was definitely worthy of its 4.5. Um, maybe he, he, he probably pushing close to five, to be honest, because it was just so good. As was Orange Cassidy versus Will Ospreay. Um, yeah. They tore the house down, by the way. That was the match of the night by a mile. So good. Um, I popped hard for seeing Okada in AEW. I thought that was a great moment. It just felt special, you know? And that match was really good as well. That match was really good. 
AEW are doing some good stuff. They really are doing some good stuff. They're doing some shit stuff as well. But, you know, Mouse's star ratings are bollocks. It's basically the long and short of that whole bit that I've just done. Blood and Guts, 3.5, at best. Claudio versus Zack Sabre Jr., 5. And I'm sticking with it, 5. Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy, 5. Oh, man. Watched a bit of Money in the Bank last night. That was on. It's cool when pay-per-views are on a Saturday night. Sorry, premium live events are on a Saturday night. And I had fun with it. I thought it was very good. I thought it was very good indeed. Um, you know, it's only the day after, so I'm not sure whether I want to talk spoilers. So if you... Okay, let's do it this way. If you don't want to hear spoilers, stop listening now and tune back in for the outro in, you know... A few minutes time probably so yeah Liv Morgan won the women's money in the bank and it was a very good match uh very exciting very fun money in the bank match enjoyed it an awful lot and it was cool to see Liv Morgan you know finally get hers you know I'm a I like Liv Morgan a lot I think she's come a long way since her early days in NXT which naturally you're going to but for her to now be in the title picture and uh, be a champion is great to see. It's really good to see. And it's good for it to not be one of the, the normal people. So, you know, Becky could have easily won money in the bank. Uh, but she didn't. And it was good. And I'm glad that Liv did win it. And I'm glad that she took the belt from Ronda later on in the night as well. Delighted, actually, that that happened. Um, I thought Lashley versus Theory was good as well. Uh, two, they're two big guys, and they put on a very good match for two big guys. Obviously, the plan going forward for Theory is for him to be the money in the bank holder and tease a cash in. I think he'll be very good with that briefcase. I know a lot of people are sort of giving Theory shit. Um, I don't know why, in all honesty. I think Austin Theory is very good, and I've always thought he's very good. And I said a long time ago on the Games and Grabs podcast that that I thought Austin Theory, um, you know, is Vince McMahon's wet dream in terms of a WWE superstar because he's a good-looking guy, he's a big guy, he's got the build, he can talk. He's, he's literally the total package, and he's a good wrestler as well. But now people are starting to turn on him. I'm not sure what people want. They want WWE to make new stars, and they shit on them when they do. So WWE just can't win, basically. But I, for one, I'm all for Austin Theory being the Money in the Bank briefcase holder. Um, uh, so it's going to be very interesting to sort of see what he does. I think he'll be great with it because he's a good heel. He is annoying and he's obnoxious and he's just a young dickhead, you know? And I think that suits the person that carry that carries the Money in the Bank briefcase. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with that. Um, and I do hope that he eventually wins the championship as well. Because it'd be cool to see someone different going for the title. We've had Roman and Brock trading back and forth for the for the last God knows how long now. So once that is done with after SummerSlam, hopefully, you know, it'd be nice to see things change a little bit. You know, I'd like to see Theory win the title. It's cool that we're now seeing Liv Morgan with the Women's Championship dethroning Ronda Rousey. So um, I'd like to think that things are now going to change in WWE. But you never know. You know, you don't know how hands-on Vince McMahon still is. You don't know how much influence Triple H, who has said he, that he's back, is having on things. But either way... Um, I, I'm holding out hope that this is a, a sign of positivi positivity and positive change within WWE. Fans, you wanted new stars, you're getting new stars. But that's wrestling fans, isn't it? The fickle. I'm fickle. I hated Cody Rhodes when he was in AEW, and now I like him. Now he's in WWE. Fickle. Brian Danielson said it best when he was Daniel Bryan. Also, all right, I've been critical of it before, but let's stop having to go at people for saying wrong names. JR said Cesaro um, on Dynamite. 
William Regal said Daniel Bryan. It doesn't matter. All right. These guys have been those names for a long time. Let's just leave him alone. People calling for JR to retire. Let's just leave it alone. Yeah. I it used to bother me, but it is what it is. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes on commentary. You know, it's just the heat of the moment. You, you've got to be got to be quick thinking. You've got to talk quick. So if you recognize somebody as someone else, which is what they've been for the last however many fucking years, it's easy to make that mistake. I know JR makes a lot of them, but look, let's give the guy a break, all right? Let's give the guy a break. He's been a WWE guy for fuck knows how many years. And Cesaro has literally been, well, Claudio has literally been Cesaro. See, I just did it then for the longest amount of time. So let's just forgive and forget and move on and stop being dickheads on the internet. And that's it. So yeah, busy weekend next weekend. I'm going to try and find time. I'm off on the Monday. So I'll probably record and put out episode seven of this podcast on the Monday. Yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do. And yeah. This has been episode six of the Clubhouse podcast with me, Sonny G. Available on all podcast services everywhere, both on a separate feed for the Clubhouse and on the Games and Graps Studios feed. And it's also going to be on my YouTube and the Games and Graps YouTube as well. So that's youtube.com forward slash Sonny Club, youtube.com forward slash Games Graps. But for now, thank you very much. Super busy weekend for me next weekend. If you're around, come to APW, come to Wrestle Carnival, support indie wrestling. And I hope you've enjoyed this podcast, um, which has just been me rambling for the last 41 and a half minutes. But it's been a good time, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy every show. So, yeah, check out all the stuff that we do. Be safe. Have a good time. And, yeah, see you next time. Later, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>